Our town meeting, I think, is great because it allows every voter, every resident in town to get up and say whatever they want and make an impact on those who maybe have not made up their, their mind on how they want to vote one way or the other on an issue. And I think just the idea that you can do that is terrific. It's, it's our uh, purest form of democracy. I would encourage my peers to look into town meeting because it's too easy to look at the things that impact them most directly like school decisions. However, if they look into the decisions that our town is making and the compromises that have to go into that that are made at town meeting, I think they would uh, learn to grow a deeper appreciation of it and a deeper appreciation of how much work goes into making the decisions. It really is the one opportunity that you as a resident have to have a direct uh, say on everything that, at, that the town does. Town meeting is, is one of the only times your vote counts directly. Town meeting is so important because that's where so many decisions are made as far as the services we may or may not receive in town and where our tax dollars go and also how much we're going to be paying in taxes. Since I'm brand new to town meeting, I think the best way for me to get started is just to attend my first town meeting and then from there I'll be able to learn more about what everyone's talking about and I'll be able to see how the decisions are made and then next year maybe I'll be ready to add, add a topic for discussion. Town meetings have been held in many Massachusetts communities for over 350 years. These meetings set priorities and make decisions that guide our local governments. Your town meeting sets the blueprint for your community's goals and spending guidelines. From school services and garbage pickup to new fire trucks and community real estate development. It's my pleasure to introduce this video to help explain your town meeting process. The video explores the history, the players, the process and how you can participate in your local town meeting. Freedom of speech and democracy are hard-won underpinnings of our American identity. It is incumbent on us to ensure that our local governments reflect the will of all of our citizens. This video encourages all registered voters, including those who have not participated in a town meeting, to take an active role setting the priorities and agenda for their community. You know, I, I have to say I'm a town meeting junkie. I love it. And the town meeting gave me an opportunity to participate and to learn of uh, the subject matters that are of interest to the community. And uh, so I've been going there for the last uh, 18, 19 years. And if you're at all interested in your community, it's putting freedom of speech to work. I can't say that I go to every meeting for every night of the session, but it's, a, it's, it's so interesting and fun and informative. In this video, we will learn how town meeting evolved, as well as the players and ingredients that make up your town meeting. We hope this program will help you better understand this unique form of democracy. We will also hear from the citizens from towns across Massachusetts and what compels them to participate in their town meetings. We begin with an overview of the history of town meeting. Recently, we conducted a roundtable with Anita Techley, Concord's town clerk, the person responsible for documenting town meeting in her town, and Dr. Susan Curtin, a Concord teacher and town meeting procedure resource person, and myself. In this roundtable, Dr. Curtin began her presentation focusing on the 1600s, when Massachusetts was first settled by European colonists who had voyaged to this new world. In the 1600s in New England, adult males, freemen, and members of the approved church were in fact the ruling body as they had been in their home country of England. Uh, the meetings at which decisions were made uh, about town business were informal. Uh, there was much discussion. Uh, compulsory attendance uh, was in fashion in those days and if you were absent, you were actually fined. There were no town officials. However, before long, these informal meetings became unwieldy and rather argumentative. And the first town official to be established was the constable. Next came the selectman, who acted as the executive committee for the town meeting. Finally, a town moderator was appointed because of, quote, intemperate clashings in our town meetings. <laughs> and a town clerk became necessary to record the votes and keep the records. 
Interestingly, in the 1700s, in the years leading up to the American Revolution, Massachusetts Governor General Thomas Gage, appointed by the Crown, tried to put a stop to these town meetings. And after hearing about the Boston Tea Party, Lord Germain in England declared, this is what comes of their wretched town meetings. These are the proceedings of a tumultuous and riotous rabble who ought not trouble themselves with politics and government, which they do not understand. However, once independent, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts included in its state constitution the following words, which really confirm the lasting importance of this form of direct democracy. The people have a right, in an orderly and peaceful manner, to assemble and to consult upon the common good and give instructions to their representatives. There is a decorum to town meeting debate, which above all is polite, to the point, and thoughtful. To maintain order and fairness in the debate, all people must directly address the town moderator. People must avoid ad hominem remarks, sticking strictly to the issue at hand and not attacking any person. People must obey the moderator's directives so that the meeting will proceed in a fair and orderly way to accomplish its business. You might say that the moderator is both the captain and the navigator of town meeting. The development of a finance committee to advise the meeting on fiscal matters and the inclusion of women as voting members are the two biggest changes in town meeting since the 1600s. One of the most notable elements of modern town meeting history and one which has had tremendous impact on most citizens of Massachusetts is Proposition 2 and a half, a referendum adopted in 1980 as a means to control the local growth of property taxes. Ms. Techley begins by looking at the tax levies that can be imposed by towns across the state. Now back to the roundtable. Tax levy is the amount that the town is allowed to raise in taxes each year in property taxes. And Proposition 2.5, what it does is limit the amount of growth that we can have in taxes each year. It is limited to the amount that was levied the prior year, plus 2.5%, plus an allowance for any new growth in town. And new growth would generally be new construction or additions in property that would result in increased valuation. If the town wishes to raise taxes above the limits allowed by Proposition 2.5, an override question on a ballot is required. Now we turn to R.D. Saul for a look at the inner workings of today's town meetings. Who says you don't have a voice at town hall? You do! And the voice is yours if you participate in the open town meeting. Hello, I'm R.D. Saul from NECN, New England Cable News. The open town meeting is perhaps the purest form of democracy we have left. An open forum for free and frank discussion of local issues, decision-making of the people, by the people, and for the people. The Massachusetts Moderators Association wants to help us understand how the open town meeting system works. We'll explain the warrant, the agenda that sets out the issues and the order of business. We'll talk about the moderator, the person who runs the meeting, guides the debate, and calls for votes and will line out the procedures that guarantee all sides of an issue get a full, open, and fair hearing. And finally, we'll take a look at some of the issues that come up at your town meeting, everything from budgets that can raise your taxes to expenditures for things like affordable housing and open space preservation. Massachusetts general laws and local bylaws govern town meeting procedures, but each of these get-togethers is unique. Every town meeting has local customs and procedures that reflect the character, and yes, sometimes the characters, of your community. I'm Ed Newman, the moderator from Stowe, Massachusetts. In the next few minutes, we'll learn about the document used in town meeting called the warrant. We will cover what it is, what it must contain, its origin, and those responsible for its creation and how the business to be debated at town meeting makes its way into a town meeting warrant. All business to be presented, debated, and voted in an annual or special town meeting must be included in a document called the warrant. Each separate item of business to be acted upon at a town meeting is actually called an article. And all of the articles will be contained in the warrant. 
an article notifies and warns voters of the general scope of the requested action to be debated and voted at a town meeting. Say, for example, to approve a department budget, modify a town bylaw, or vote to approve borrowing of money. Generally, an article does not need to define the specific scope of the debate, such as the exact dollar amount requested, or the funding mechanism, such as to borrow the funds required. The warrant also warns voters of two other important points of information. First, the date and time of the opening of the first session of the town meeting. And secondly, where in your town the meeting will be held. The Board of Selectmen is responsible for calling the meeting, that is, deciding the date and time of the meeting and location where it will be held. The Board of Selectmen is also responsible for preparing and constructing the warrant. They vote to open the warrant at one of their board meetings. Opening the warrant notifies town officials and voters that the board will accept articles to be included in the warrant for the planned town meeting. This opening of the warrant is typically scheduled several months in advance of the meeting to provide town officials and residents time to prepare the requests for voters. Once the warrant is opened, town officials, boards, committees, departments, and voters may submit proposed articles in writing to the Board of Selectmen. An article contains the specific language that the submitter would like printed in the warrant. The Board of Selectmen also vote to close the warrant. Once the warrant is closed, town officials assemble the warrant for the final review and approval by the Board of Selectmen. The Board approves the warrant, including the sequence of articles, by signing the final draft making it the official warrant for the planned town meeting. Then the town clerk takes over, preparing the warrant for distribution to the public. By law, the town clerk is required to post the warrant in a minimum number of public places within the town, and prior to a specified number of days in advance of the opening of the meeting. Then how can you prepare for town meeting? By reviewing the information describing the articles contained in the warrant, you can review the general scope of business to be discussed at town meeting and make sure you also update your calendar to include the dates for the planned meeting. I actually did speak at a town meeting and uh, uh, it's not easy uh, to get up and uh, do so, but I was so impassioned that a particular farmland uh, be saved. It was my, my first town meeting where I'd come from a, a big city where there were multi-million dollar decisions and here we were spending about 15 minutes arguing about 550 some dollars for new tires for the police cruiser. We had just moved to town and as I'm reading the the newspapers week after week and seeing this issue of cell towers and just even trying to figure out well where in the town was this tower going to go and uh, so it was it was almost a last minute decision. All right, I'm going to go to this town meeting and really see what it's uh, what it's about. The most important participants in a town meeting are of course you. Every registered voter in town is invited to vote. However, you have to check in with the town clerk or the checkers. The meeting can't conduct business unless there's a quorum, a minimum number of voters. When you enter the meeting hall, you'll find a lot of people up front. Don't be put off by that. They're there for a reason. You'll see the moderator and town officials. The board of selectmen will be there. They're the men and women who carry out and oversee town operations based on decisions made at the town meeting. Sometimes you'll find a town manager or administrator who's responsible for day-to-day -to -day town operations. Also up front, the school committee and the superintendent of schools. The finance or advisory committee will be there too. That committee reviews budgets and makes recommendations to the town meeting on items in the warrant that involve money. And the town council will be ready to provide legal advice. Business begins when the sponsor of an article in the warrant, an item on the agenda, makes a motion. The sponsor speaks in support of the motion. Then it's your chance. Town meeting voters have their say in turn after being recognized by the moderator. When the debate ends and the vote is called, tellers count the votes. Some items on the warrant move quickly. Others, especially those that have generated a lot of local interest, can take some time. But that's the way it works. It's up to you, the town meeting voters, to air the issue and decide what to do. Watching over and guiding the process is the town moderator, 
I'd like you to meet Charlie Salisbury, one of the fastest gavels in the business. I am town moderator in North Andover, one of more than 250 communities who operate by the open town meeting form of government. In this segment, I'll explore the town moderator's role in conducting town meeting from the perspective of the voters and town officials who attend town meeting, and of equal importance, all of those voters who choose not to attend town meeting. The elected town moderator is specifically responsible for conducting town meetings and is not directly involved in local government decisions that will be voted by a meeting. As discussed earlier, the warrant serves as the agenda for the business that is to be acted on at town meeting, and the articles contained within the warrant can be general in scope. Yet voters attending town meeting debate and vote on very specific proposals. Each specific proposal on action is called a motion. A motion presented to the meeting under an article printed in the warrant must be very specific and eliminate the range of possibilities contained in the article. A motion asks voters to act upon a very specific action. For example, the town meeting may be asked to act on a motion such as to vote to appropriate and borrow the sum of $1 million for the purchase of a specific parcel of land, which must be described, and to be contingent upon a debt exclusion override vote. This example of a motion provides voters with a specific decision. Would you like to purchase this parcel of land for this sum with borrowed money? Tonight you are being asked to vote on acquisition of a portion of the Cushing property for active recreation, affordable housing, and open space. So we go from the general request contained in the warrant article to the specific action to be voted upon at a town meeting. If you read along in your warrant while a motion is presented to the voters, you will see and hear these distinctions. Understand that voters can only act on motions at town meeting, not articles. A moderator has several responsibilities in the conduct of town meeting. First, to facilitate the orderly flow of business of town meeting. This includes calling on town officials or voters for motions to be acted on allowing civil debate between and among voters and town officials, and by voters on all sides of an issue. Duties also include serving as parliamentarian, guiding the meeting through procedures such as amendments, points of order, and debate. When debate ends, the moderator calls for a vote on the motion or question for the meeting. Following the tabulation of the vote, the moderator declares the outcome of the final motion there are many examples of very close votes. Therefore, your participation and vote can and does make a difference. There were 712 yes votes, 325 no votes, total of 1,037 votes. It needed to pass by two-thirds. It passed by 68.7%. So Article 23 moves forward. Out of 256 votes cast, 126 yes, 130 no. The motion fails. The Finance Committee, sometimes known as the Advisory or Warrant Committee, is a group of citizens responsible for investigating proposals which would have a financial impact on the town and making an independent recommendation to the meeting based on their analysis of the needs and benefits to the town. The order in which articles are acted upon varies by town. Many towns take up the articles in the order as they are printed in the warrant. Some use a lottery approach to randomize the sequence of articles. And with the permission of voters, the order and grouping of action under articles can be changed. Once the motion is accepted by the moderator for discussion, the work begins for you, the voter. Remember, each article's sponsors are seeking your approval so you can listen to town officials and your neighbors as they ask questions. You can ask your own questions and encourage your neighbors to support or disapprove a motion. I don't think uh, this is a strategic project and we ought to save our, both our money and our energy for other projects. When debate has concluded, the moderator asks you to vote and your vote makes a difference. If a motion presented at a town meeting varies from the scope of the article, a moderator will not accept that motion because voters who chose initially not to attend the meeting might have chosen to attend if they knew that a different question would be asked of the voters. So actions voted by the meeting are limited to those that are described by the warrant. 
Frequently, not all business contained in the warrant can be completed in a single evening or session of town meeting, although some might prefer this to be the case. Therefore, before any business in any session is completed, the meeting votes on a time and date to resume the business contained in the warrant. Once all the articles contained in the warrant have been acted upon, the meeting votes to dissolve and it is left to the town clerk to publish the official minutes of the meeting. The town moderator uh, is a person just like you and me, except the town moderator uh, has the responsibility of keeping you and me in line when we both want to get our very uh, contradicting views across. When I visited hill towns in, in western Massachusetts um, where they were operating in very small rooms with no heat and no bathrooms and you know the whole town came to town meeting and it's a very different dynamic than when you get some percentage you know in Stowe we, if we're lucky we get 700 people out of you know 3,000 households and you know 5,000 people so it's a really different dynamic when everybody all your neighbors are there versus when just some of your neighbors are there. I've often gone in with very definite ideas on how I feel about something and then lo and behold you'll listen to you know, some other person, and you think, oh my gosh, maybe he does, does have a point. So you do learn a lot if you keep your ears open. You, learn, you do. I think it's important that every individual should go uh, to see how the town runs and make decisions that actually affect their lives, in both in taxes and in services. I am Betsy Anderson, the moderator from Bedford. Now I will discuss some of the more common procedures you will see used when attending, participating in, or observing a town meeting. Procedures are simply the rules that guide the moderator in conducting the meeting. These procedures are not complex, so with this brief explanation, you should feel confident enough to participate in your town meeting. If you have a procedural question, of course, you can always ask the moderator for assistance. This is best done before the start of a town meeting session. Incidentally, some towns will formally adopt a set of procedures in their bylaws to regulate the conduct of town meeting. They may follow a guide called Town Meeting Time or Robert's Rules of Order. Other towns rely on tradition or past practice to regulate the meeting. Whatever is the basis of your town meeting's procedures, it is still the responsibility of your moderator to consistently apply them while presiding over the town meeting. Let's discuss several of the key motions. First, we have a main motion. This is the question the voters are being asked to consider, debate, and on which they will cast their vote. The main motion will follow closely the article that is printed in the warrant, and the moderator will call upon a town official or voter to make this motion to the meeting. Move that the town approve and appropriate the proposed FY 2007 budget. A second type of motion, a motion to amend, can be presented to the meeting, and this motion to amend may also be debated and must be voted. Either voters or town officials may make a motion to amend. For example, amendments can correct language or factual errors in the motion, change the amount of money requested, and so on. Once again, the moderator will rule on accepting the motion to amend before allowing the voters to discuss the motion. The debate or discussion on a motion at town meeting can be powerful. And I don't see 3%, 3%, 3%, 3% all over the place. I see fictitious numbers like one percent, zero percent, two percent. Those are numbers I remember. Those were the early numbers I learned. Many voters who come to town meeting with an open mind make their decision on how to cast their vote based on what is said and by whom. So listen carefully to the debate and importantly, don't be shy about participating in the debate as well. For any motion being debated, there is only so much that can be said on both sides of an issue without becoming repetitious. Therefore, when you address the meeting, try to ask new questions or share new information with the voters. In an effort to keep the meeting flowing, an attentive moderator may gently remind voters not to be repetitive when addressing the meeting. When no one comes forward to address the meeting, it is easy for the moderator to know when voters have heard enough information and are ready to cast their vote. But what can a voter do when he or she has heard enough information to make an informed decision and is ready to cast his or her vote? A third and also common motion can be made to call the previous question or move the previous question. This motion allows all of the voters to determine if it is time to terminate debate without any further discussion and to immediately vote on whatever motion is being debated. This could be either a main motion or a motion to amend. You can think of this as a two-step process. 
In step one, the voters decide if they are ready to vote on the motion without actually deciding the outcome of the motion. If the decision of the voters to a call the question motion is yes, then the motion being debated is then voted. The moderator will declare the outcome of the vote and then the meeting is ready to take up the next article of business. But what options exist to reconsider the outcome of a vote already taken at a meeting? A fourth motion, the motion to reconsider, varies among towns based upon their own bylaws and traditions. When the motion to reconsider is brought to the meeting, as with any motion, the moderator must first rule to accept this motion. He or she will make their ruling based upon the new information being presented and the local bylaws or tradition. Now you have heard the basic procedures used at town meeting. Of course, there are other procedures available for use, and you may hear these used at your town meeting. With this information, you have mastered the basics and are ready to actively participate. Well, the interesting part is that each one of us, the members of the community, have an opportunity to express an opinion, or if we want to, is to put in an article, a warrant article, for discussion purposes, if we want something to be decided upon at the town meeting. So we have that kind of opportunity. When you vote, it's sort of a passive thing. When you go to town meeting, you get a chance to to hear all the presentations and almost as much information as the selectmen have or the planning board, and you rarely get that in any other kind of government. In my town, uh, there's a big issue of whether we'd be building uh, new sports fields, and it's a perfect example of how the decisions made at town meeting have great effects on adults and even kids. When you understand what an impact town meeting decisions have on you, your family, and your pocketbook, you'll see why it's important to participate. The town budget and the school budgets are two good examples. Town officials present the town budget. The school committee offers the school budget, with the bottom line being voted on by town meeting. The finance committee is standing by with recommendations. Sometimes there are building or other capital projects on the warrant. Other items also have to go through the meeting process. Bylaw and charter changes, borrowing money, community preservation, open space protection, affordable housing, and recreational activities, to name a few. Now the part about your pocketbook. Your local tax rate for the following year is based on the votes at the annual town meeting. That's why the meeting has to be held between the beginning of February and the end of June. Sometimes special town meetings are called to deal with specific topics, land acquisition, budget adjustments, and bylaw changes to mention a few. A special town meeting can be called by the Board of Selectmen or by a voter petition. One thing that's great about town meeting is that if there's something that's bothering you in your, in your neighborhood, all you have to do is get 10 signatures and take it into um, the town the town office and then that can be an issue that's part that's discussed and, and decided at the town meeting. If you have a very strong opinion about something and get a number of people of the same mind, they can go in there and you can influence the outcome. When it all comes to an end with all the diversity uh, within the uh, warrant articles, uh, a lot uh, is accomplished and people applaud and uh, you know, you, you you feel you've done it once again. I, mean, I don't think you can complain about laws that happen in your town and then moan and groan about it if you haven't participated in the discussion or and voted. So there you have it, a look at how the open town meeting works. Open to you, registered voters. Meeting, deciding together what's important to the quality of life in your community and determining where to spend your tax dollars. It's a system of local government that works best when more people participate. Sure, there's disagreement and strong feelings for and against some proposals, but in the end, it's about common interests and shared goals. It's about community. So don't stand on the sidelines and complain. Jump in, watch for your local town meeting, show up, speak your mind, and cast your vote. It's your duty to do it, that if you think about, you know, I would never think about not voting in a state election or, or a national election, and that the town meeting is your opportunity to really vote on everything that, that takes place in the town. You realize the town fathers are you, and uh, there's an opportunity and there's a responsibility 
that uh, lies you know, within us, and it's it's our lives, our community, and our way of uh, of being part of the process. Many of my classmates will be able to vote in the upcoming town meeting, and I would just urge them to learn about the issues and to go and take an active role in the meeting because so many decisions made there have great effects on their daily lives. What makes a town meeting great is when you have a number of people that listen to each other, debate each other, and then vote and walk away talking to each other. Well, it's great to be in a place where you can actually have a say in what, what's being decided and, and your voice counts. It's exciting to participate it's exciting to be a legislator, and even as a form of theater, town meeting can be a form of theater, and I hope that that will, being able to instill that feeling will inspire people to get out of their houses, get into their cars, and really be there.